second option for the reconfiguration. And this option will be the two K to threes and the one four to five building. Before we get started, just a couple comments. I'd like to thank everybody on the administrative team for putting their time and effort into this. Uh, the first presentation option a few weeks ago was very good. And I'm sure we're expecting the same thing tonight, and I'm sure it will be. The second thing I wanted to say also is uh, I think a lot of us that have been involved in this for over the years and maybe, and I'll say over the decade of some type of change here in the Indiana School District, I'm going to ask for everybody's patience uh, to, to continue. We're all, I think, feeling that maybe we are finally coming to an end with where we're going to go, but we don't want to speed things up just to get it done either. So we want to continue to be methodical and and you know look at everything which we have been so far we're going to see it again tonight in the presentation and then i think the plan mike is then for in january then we'll look at the two options side by side uh debate and discuss the pros and cons to both of them and stuff so i guess that's where i'm asking for patience is you know we're not going to make any decisions tonight we're going to wait till january to then thoroughly vet the two options. Yeah, Mr. Kerr, if I could, I think you're absolutely right. The only thing we would have to get some clarity on is SSI. I believe they owed us another facilitating session. So maybe after this meeting sometime this week, I can follow up with them and ask them what they recommend the next steps would be. Because I think my job was to give you the two options with the greater numbers and greater detail. I think we may turn over back them to facilitate the last one, but let me work on that, sir. And I'll be sure to get back to you, but I like your idea of time frame in sir. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. And the meeting's to you. Okay. I was under the impression that the third option was to turn everything away. And is that, is, is that part of the comparison, or have we already decided that we're going to have three buildings? Now, well, for the sake of tonight, you asked me. No, or, I understand for tonight, but he's talking about comparing the two. I thought we were going to compare the three buildings. The, the board has the right if they would like to add it. Yeah. We'd have to add that, Tom. I think several meetings ago, we had reached a consensus that we were looking at these two options. I understand. The, I we understand could compare that. it to the existing. I, but, I didn't think that. But so that's well, the, we could go through that that analysis. What I sensed from the first one, and what I sensed in previewing this one was these are all in addition to what we're currently doing now as far as our costs go, as far as the number of teachers go, and that sort of thing. So we could do that, Tom, but I think we kind of do it sort of a backdoor approach to it because if you assume what we're doing is the base, then what either one of these things then adds to that base whatever that whatever that is you think that when you do the comparison that we don't have the three that we have to talk about the strengths and the weakness of the base um and the cost of continuing to not to the base if you want mr crack to work with ssi on that and defer to them make mr harley's um comments known to them and see how they want to proceed it's, i mean they're facilitating i'm sure they can do that the um so, so are you suggesting, Tom, that we do a, a completely separate briefing like this on that, or do we weave that into the discussion? I think it gets more into the discussion. Um, I don't think it, it, it needs a separate briefing, meaning that everything that you write, everything we're doing compares it to the base. But I do think that when we get to the point of making a decision, that we have to acknowledge that staying, staying with what we have is a possibility, and there's advantages economically and Educationally, to to either not staying or moving off the board. So, um, I don't think the board is. The board certainly hasn't formally decided to move the three building operation. So, so maybe maybe the suggestion then would be, Tom, that um, like the last two pages here, the pros and the cons, that maybe Mike could develop what the pros and the cons are as part of that, as part of that discussion with the current. Um, yeah, 
I mean, th let's be clear on a couple things. We did what we were told. You asked us to come up with these two configurations, and we can add to that. I just don't want anyone in this room thinking we've missed a step, no, or we, yeah, no, we, that's not the case. I, yeah, I mean, if you want to do that, it's okay. a conversation. We can work that up. Yep. And then work it in on our discussion about these the two options that we've reviewed in a formal briefing. Sure. Let me talk to SSI. I see how I want to proceed. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yep. <laughs> okay. Yep. Right. yep. Okay. <laughs> Just a couple of reminders about the background and assumptions that were made. Um, one, you asked us to follow up on the work from SSI. You were appreciated their presentation and what they brought forth, but you wanted some additional numbers and kind of a framework for what it would look like in the last presentation. Hopefully this one will meet that requirement. The goal was to provide you with additional information as we said. This model that you're going to look at tonight only reflects models of all kids in one, four, and five um, building at Eisenhower. Again, this is the scenario that one of, or one of the options that the IS board, ISD board of directors identify as one of top preferences. As informed by the buildings, grounds, and transportation committee meeting, the ISD work, administration worked off the assumption that horse man would be the building closed underneath this scenario. And as a result of this design, we did not have to redraw um, boundary lines or encatchment areas as a result of the four and five being at Eisenhower. So we want to talk about enrollment by building, just like we did last time. I provided this to you, hopefully electronically, and you have a paper copy in front of you. Uh, we just want to talk about what it would look like size-wise. So we made some comparisons to the last model. Under the last model, uh, looking at the number of students at Ike, there was... ...303 pre-K through grade five options. And the number of classrooms needed, there were 17 under this option and 18 requested in the last one. Uh, you're very close in size and very close in structure, as you could see in enrollment. There's not much difference there. And when you look at the projected class sizes, averages, in fourth grade, we're looking at 22. Uh, in fifth grade, about 24, with an average throughout the building of 23. So we find them to be manageable uh, in most cases, and we find it something that would align to what I think the board's vision of their classroom uh, class size guidelines are. If we wanted to project the old scenario um, to the new scenario, under the old scenario where we had three K to five buildings, Ben Frank would have about 21 in a class and fifth grade would have about almost 18 or 20. At East Pike, you're looking at 20 in fourth grade and 25 in fifth grade, again, under the old scenario. And then at Ike, you're looking at four, uh, 20 in fourth grade and 20 in fifth grade. To your right, you'll see the numbers under this scenario, what the average class size would be, again, to be redundant intentionally, 22 in fourth grade and 24 in fifth grade with an average of about 23. Under staffing needs, what we did was, and this is where it gets a little convoluted, and I apologize for not being as clear as I should be in that presentation I provided you earlier. You would not need, it's my understanding, you would not need two additional music teachers because they would not go back. They would stay under our current model. We would not have the need for lessons and other pullouts that we discussed under the previous model. So you would not need those two positions. Could the board decide to add two positions? Absolutely you could. But under this model, we would just continue under a framework of specials that we currently have in place. You also would not need two STEM teachers. And but again, continue. when you asked me to do this, Mr. President, you asked me to look at what I would want to include. And we've been having you know, frequent conversations about the need to infuse STEM in our elementary school. So with this said, um, we could operate six specials, library, general music, art, STEM, phys ed, and chorus band. We would like to add the STEM to the program, but there's a cost associated with that. And the cost does not include any refurbishing uh, of any areas that may be needed to, in order to operate a STEM classroom. Under this model, we'd have one less staff person that you would need under the scenario. So you could hypothetically, that estimated cost of $240,000 for STEM could be limited to $120,000. That number is misleading. I put an asterisk there. That number also could be zero because the board of the directors have the right to say, look, we don't, we're not ready for STEM yet. Let's take some time. Let's see how our population grows or decreases and see where we're at a couple of years from now. And that could be a zero. The only reason why we're putting 120 is because if you wanted STEM, we kind of want to show the, hot, the most, I don't want to say worst case scenario, the, the highest scenario as far as the costs are associated with. Make sense, Mr. President? Thank you. Terry, did you Mr. have a Kerr? question? 
the first bullet there, we would, by eliminating two music teachers, we would not be reducing the services to students in the music area. That That's correct. And this case, we w we didn't hire these people. So we wouldn't be furloughed or laying off anyone. We just wouldn't hire them. They would get the same program they always have received. Uh, Aaron, did I misspeak I on that? I somebody to read that. Say, correct. Oh, no. We're cutting music. No. no we're not yeah, cutting correct. Music. Yeah. Because there are right. currently two music teachers at one at Horse Man and one at Eisenhower. So therefore, those two music teachers would come together right. to provide those services. Yep. Yep. That's important clarification. Thank yeah. you, sir. Mm -hmm. Jared, anything you want to say about the cost that I may have spoke on? No, I, I mean, that's that's the standard cost that we budget for any new teacher um, here. <clears throat> and we've gone over those numbers a couple of different times. The next one on the list, the board's going to have to make a decision upon, not right now, but eventually, is about the pre-K classroom. Under the old scenario, we thought about adding one pre-K classroom to the third building if they were K to fives. Under this scenario, you would have some extra space in Ben Franklin and East Pike. Um, that if you wanted to add more pre-K classrooms, you could, or you could look at what happens to Forest Man. I cannot sit here and tell you today that I know what the Build Back Better plan looks like, nor will we, I don't know what the money, if, if it's going to come this way for early learning or what the strings attached to that look like. We had some early conversations about this last time I presented. Since then, no additional information that I've been made aware of has come out. However, if you wanted to include another pre-K classroom, uh, you're looking at about $205,000 per classroom. That includes the classroom teacher, salary and benefits, and then the paraprofessional salary and benefits. As you know, uh, as, you, as you can see, I put an asterisk on this slide as well. So in case uh, you don't have to do this, it, it is it could be a cost, but it also could be cost neutral, depending on what direction the board of directors want to take. And again, to be redundant intentionally, I have not received any additional information from the feds about the Build Back Better plan and the impact that would have on us with early learning. This is an opportunity, if it does come the road, to have another conversation. I'd probably look at looking at partners with their outside vendors, something like IUP, um, Head Start, see what else we could do for that facility, because I'm afraid of the money drying up. And then what happens after the money dries up? Do we furlough X amount of teachers? I would not want to do that to anyone. Uh, and that's very premature to say, because I don't know what springs are going to be attached to the money yet. We haven't heard anything, and I don't even know if that plan will get passed yet. But as soon as we hear something, We'll let you know. Uh, does that say, make sense, Mr. Kerr? Mm -hmm. Okay. On the next slide, again, it's just a total potential staffing cost. There's an asterisk I could, on this one because all I did was total the STEM teacher that would be necessary as well as the pre-K classroom, and that's how we came to that number. The asterisk is there, again, because you don't have to add or replace any of those positions because they don't currently exist. If you wanted to, that gives you an idea of what the cost associated with it. And also compared it to the cost in staffing under the pre-K uh, through grade five option. So you get a kind of a comparison of what it would cost under the first scenario compared to this one. Under staffing cost breakdown, again, we see a, a additional staffing cost of $325,000. If you see the, um, the limiting of positions of administration assistant, uh, LPN and two custodians, you have $171,000 in savings there with a net total for $154,000 in staffing budgetary expenditures. Again, this number could be zero depending on what you wanna do. As I said last time, I'd like to mention again, and it's not to be mean or threatening or scary or doomsday, a lot of these positions we can use though. The LPN, uh, we're running on fumes with some of the LPNs we have in place. And if we see some people retire, there could be a way to you know keep these people in the organization, just depending on your timing, depending on what happens and depending where we're at with regards to COVID. Um, we always can use more custodians. I don't want to speak for Cheney, but I'll try to speak for Cheney a little bit on, on this one. Uh, we're always struggling to find people for custodians as well. They have done an incredible job over the pandemic. And, you know, if we have good people, we should try to keep them. But again, who knows where we'll be a, a couple of years from now uh, when we look at the staffing, and when we get to the point where this building, one building would be closed and new building would be open. Does that make sense to you, Mr. Kerr? Is that okay? Yes. All right. Under building needs and layouts, this is where I'd like, um, after I go over a couple slides, then defer to the principals. We thought it was important for you to see what each building, how each building would be impacted by this. When I talked to Don and Kelly, they were pretty clear in our front that it's all systems go, just like they currently were. So you'll see 21 out of 22 grade level classrooms being utilized. If additional rooms were needed due to growth at Ben Franklin, uh, we'd be able to use, take some of the rooms that we have for specialists and others as a classroom. But you're going to have to have some hard conversations about what you want to do with Ben Franklin. 
if you want to put the entry um, space up, there are other rooms needed that are identified by the architects, you can, or you, you can talk about a bigger, more comprehensive project down the road. That's obviously up to you and your concern. Uh, East Pike, though, the one thing that we'd like to do, and I appreciate Mr. Kerr for allowing us to do this, we are working towards redesigning the old office space area to get one full-size classroom and then a smaller learning center, as well as the air conditioning. We would like that to <laughs> like that to continue as well. As Mr. Kerr alluded at the last board meeting, we had a chance to sit down with the architects, look at what that space would utilize, and we have a uh, solid plan going forward. And then, I, again, as we discussed, 17 classrooms would be needed. We're short several classrooms, just like in the last scenario. We would need more parking, and then we also need the entryway to be done as well as a multi-purpose area and special wing. So you see a lot of similarities. Be I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Um, when you look at the current population in our elementary school, none of those classes are more than 200 kids. The, the classes that are going through the senior high now are a little higher than 200. Um, so when you look at the next five years, we don't have a single class above 200. So that's a significant difference than when we had classes of 200, 225. So when, when you're designing a building and you have one extra classroom today and you look down and you're going to have 25 kids less per class, um, that's that's 120 kids that are just um, coming up through. And there's no reason to expect that we're going to have a big influx of, uh, of kids. So I'm very comfortable with, with designing the district at this, at this level of capacity. Okay. Yes, sir. If it's okay with you, Mr. Kerr, I'd like to turn the floor over to Aaron. Uh, what I'd like to do, that Aaron will walk through um, her building concept, what she needs, similar to last time, so you guys have a clear understanding. Then we'll turn it over to Dawn, turn it over to Callie, let them talk about what their buildings look like. Even though it's not connected, we'd like you to see the bigger picture. And if you don't want to, we can always move on. But we think it's important to give you what every other building would look like. That way you hear directly from the principals, if that's okay, sir. We definitely sir? want to hear from them. Okay. Aaron, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, thank you, everyone, for being here tonight. Um, what I did was basically designed a fourth grade wing and a fifth grade wing. That way, if we can continue with the current model of compartmentalization where we are switching math and ELA classes, it would be a convenient way for the kids to move across the halls and those kinds of things. Um, that way they're not walking you know, down there. Um, using the space that we currently have, we would still need to add the wing for specials and we still need the multi-purpose room because the cafeteria, the multi-purpose room slash cafeteria would need to be larger to accommodate larger lunches with the larger number of students in the building. Um, the special, there would be a need for an additional special education classroom. I did put the autistic support classroom and the life skills classrooms at the fourth grade wing there at each end to keep them in the ebb and flow of education so it would meet PDE guidelines and also to allow um, to use some of the current space because we're putting the autistic classroom, that classroom has an opening into what's currently the office area so we could make that easily into a cool down room, those kinds of things and not have to totally redesign. So that was kind of the logic behind that so that they would have those extra services and spaces that they would need that way. Um, we would also still would need the secure entrance, which you had already um, been discussing and those kinds of things. Um, I would ask for um, two extra classrooms um, and then two and a half for like the reading specialist. It's like those don't have to be full classrooms. So those could be the smaller classrooms that we've discussed in the past. Um, and then the, the wing and the multi-purpose room. And then, like I said, the artistic support. If we put it where I want, you would only need, and I, I did think, if I'm not mistaken, there is plumbing there also, so we could put a bathroom there as well without having to do too much major redesigning. So it's pretty much the same thing that I showed back when we first started, too. Um, I didn't make many changes, just that we did the wing and we kind of um, bookend the special ed so we keep them in the oven flow. And Mr. Kerr, if it's okay with you, I know we have Tom and Elijah on the call. Um, Tom or Elijah, is there any input that you'd like to provide based off Aaron's work or anything you want to clarify that we may have misspoken about? No, not, not at this time. Okay. I think there's a lot of variables out there and, and, you know, we need to go through the process of working with, um, with the board and the admin and principals and teachers, um, to make sure that that all works together with the, whatever, additions are required but um that's all i would say for that okay thank you miss eisman anything else you want to explain to the group that we may have missed no i just i'd like to have a we have eight fifth grade classroom yes why is that because that one of the extra, nine fourth grade right because that hallway allows for the nine one of the extra classrooms that i'm asking for would be the other fifth grade classroom okay so you would have 
Probably. And, and what's the guidelines for, um, what's our current guidelines for class size and important things? 28. I'm sorry? 28. 28? Wow. Okay, so. I like to keep it at 25, I'll be honest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but she's right. <laughs> but as, kids, as a class is coming up, it's um, going to be as small as 20. And so we start. Yeah. I just took, I, did, yeah. I, I lost the classroom. I wasn't sure what happened. That, that would be one of the ones for, was for the group that I have there. Okay, very good. But I didn't, because of the way that hall is designed, I didn't want to just stick it out in no man's land. Yeah, yeah I, I would like to point out that. that, that whether we build classrooms or specials, um, all the classrooms can be on a fifth grade wing as, as an alternate. Right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but, but it, this, this is a good representation of what we have today. <coughs> Thank you. Mr. Kerr, are you okay if I move on next one? Okay. Aaron, are you, are you I'm good? I'm comfortable. Okay. Next we have up, um, we have East Pike, Dawn. I know if you want to just give the board an overview of what your plan would look like, it pretty much stays the same, but at least let the board understand what we're looking at, what that impact would be on you, sir. Sure. It, it is exactly what we're operating with today. Uh, there are five of each, uh, five classrooms of each grade level, uh, starting at kindergarten at one end, um, kindergarten in one or in one wing of the building, and two, three occupy the other wing. Uh, there are two autistic support classrooms, uh, one life skills classrooms, um, and then some of the smaller spaces you can see there, and a pre-K classroom as well. And before we turn go on the next slide, I would like Dawn and maybe Justin and Rob to weigh in. Our numbers have seen a dramatic increase in the number of kids who um, have autistic needs over in the district, so the space will be valuable as we continue to grow. But Dawn, can you speak to how many rooms we have available in case we do need another classroom? And Justin and Rob, can you maybe speak about... Uh, not only how the classrooms have grown in number, but some of the needs that go along with that. Because it's not, you may look and say eight kids in a classroom, that's not a lot. But then when you look at the amount of needs and services, material, equipment in there, it, it really justifies number. But let's start with Dawn, followed by Justin and then Rob. Uh, we currently, the two autistic support classrooms we currently have, um, one is filled, uh, the other has five students in it. Uh, so we are three students from capacity there. Um, and life skills classroom. Um, also, it's uh, that offers that's K to three. Uh, there's, I don't think we're at capacity with K to three though, or, or the life skills room. Are we just I think so. Yeah. So um, just as far as this uh, the space for autistic support rooms, over the past um, over the past three years, we've had an increase in students that have come to us from early intervention programs and Head Start programs. This past year, we had four mm -hmm. students. Um, so uh, at, at that rate, if we were to continue to get four students each year, um, eight students being your max, your maximum for an autistic support classroom. So that would mean that if we would get four students every year, every two years, there would need to be an additional autistic support classroom, um, you know, build in the district. So, you know, there, that's that's one need um, that we I think will continue to see happen. Uh, but with the space itself. Uh, the autistic support room does need um, it, it's it's not a requirement for them to have a restroom located inside the classroom, but it is absolutely, um, you know, students that we have in the autistic support room. Many of them are on uh, intensive toileting plans where um, they're attempting to use the, the, the toilet every 15, 20 minutes or so. And um, so while it's not a requirement that the school district have that. I think it's absolutely in, in our best interest and in the students' best interest to have that. Uh, in addition to that, there are some other things that aren't requirements, but, but necessary to run the classroom. Um, as an example, uh, in our current autistic support classrooms, we have uh, a good deal of sensory um, uh, things for students. Like as an example, we have students that have in their IEPs uh, that there's a sensory swing inside the room. So, you know, if it's written into a student's individual education program, um, we have to follow it. And so many, many times um, there's equipment that's related. So as far as space, we do need a little bit um, uh, more amount of space. So even though it's only eight students in that autistic support room, the amount of space that's required because of a lot of the equipment that goes in there is, is absolutely necessary. Um, I 
get 21 classrooms, we'll get a 22. Um, but with an extra classroom floating around here somewhere. Um, Don's probably hiding it. Um, the music program in three to five, uh, pre-K to five, uh, I'm sorry, pre-K to three is not as intensive as four and five. So for either of those music groups, they will be reutilized. Re and then my last question is, what's I INT stand for? That's our, it's where the current interns go. Um, that used, that was the old, um, uh, Jason Rommel, when he would do instrumental music at East Pike, that's where the, the lessons were out of that space. So we've taken that, that space and put our uh, literacy interns from IUP into that room. And then there is a, that small connecting room um, that goes between those two rooms is currently uh, an aid room. Okay. And the, and, the, and the music rooms? It is being, it was a learning support classroom, uh, but we had to shift that uh, to the, what was the faculty room, um, and then we made uh, that an intern space. Okay, but you have two music rooms now on this chart. I'm talking about this chart here. So there's two, there's two music rooms, and I don't think you need two Oh, sorry, the, the big music's the stage. Right. Right. Yeah, that is just the that that should have been relisted as the stage, not music. Can you use that space. for something, or are you going to strike music off of that? Uh, current, I can take music off of that. Currently, we are in the process. It is uh, Santa's secret workshop at the moment. Um, well, don't tell anybody. But it will. Uh, it would. Yeah. It, <laughs> <laughs> only what is it? Twelve more days. Two more shopping days till Christmas. <laughs> Anyhow, um, it will be. Uh, there'll be some sensory items on the stage for our autistic support and life skills uh, students. Can that be used as a classroom, or can that be used? No. As, okay. Even though it said music. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's where the band was at. It was set up for band, and when band would practice as a band, they had the okay. risers and all the stuff set up on the stage. Okay. And so you so you maintain the existing music the, the existing music room you maintain. Yes. Okay. I'm I'm, I'm just trying to get this so that it's so that when Somebody looks at this that doesn't have. No, that's my mistake. It doesn't have the question and answer that we can get this straightened out. So I'll also put the uh, what INT stands for. I asked our junior high principal; he didn't know what it was either. <laughs> we can do that. Go on, do you mind getting that to me? I that's will take care there. of it. Thank okay, thank you. I just would add that um, under what Justin had said, the, the the need for autistic support is growing every year. In two thousand. There was approximately one child born with autism for every 150 births. In 2018, it's one student or it's one child is born with autism out of every 44 births. So, you know, the increase for whatever reason is growing. Um, so we will down the road have to add additional autistic support classrooms in our in our schools. Mr. Kerr, if you're okay, I move on. Okay. Uh, if it's okay with you, Mr. Kerr, I'll turn the floor over to Ms. Urbani. She can give you an overview of what her building would look like under the old, under the uh, this model, which is really the old model. But go ahead, yeah. Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Vukovic. Um, this is pretty much how Ben Franklin is currently set up. I did have wishful thinking. If you look in the um, first wing, the orange wing, I do have a STEM classroom listed, but again, that's just being wishful. That could um, be the intervention room that it is currently if it wasn't a STEM room. Um, we still are able to maintain two kindergarten classrooms and two second grade classrooms on the main floor. That's important to do because um, as you can see, the whole middle wing, which is mostly pink and blue, is not accessible to all students. And so um, we, I do need to have two classrooms down in that main hallway. Um, in the last hallway, the, the green wing, there is um, one space that would not be utilized under this model, but what I would like to do with that is turn that into an intervention room with three intervention rooms um, spread across the school. That would make a lot less transition time for when, when students have to move from classroom to classroom. And so I could have teachers teaching out of those classrooms as well. And that would, again, just really eliminate a lot of the um, loss of instructional time when you do have to transition. Um, other than that, there's there's not much that would be um, different than what we're doing right now. The classrooms are never going to change. The size of the classrooms are going to be the same, you know. Ke Kelly, just yes. a technical question. Sure. To satisfy my curiosity, I understand why you have um, 
two kindergarten and two second grade on that uh, that main hallway that connects everything. Mm -hmm. But why why is the kindergarten kind of off to the side? Why isn't it sort of closer to the to the stairway? I'm thinking more collaboration and and um, things like that. And it, it may not be appropriate for this particular discussion tonight, but it's a question that I'm I'm I'm, I'm kind of asking. That's all. And you, you have the two second grade classes separated by art. I, I, would, I would think. So that... the art room is not a room that I can move. Okay. Um, there were uh, a lot of built buildings put into it, so I've been told I can never move the art room. <laughs> um, it's it just it's no longer um, place set up for a classroom. Like there's nowhere to put um, cubbies. Lockers are gone. Okay. So that has to save the art room. Um, the two kindergarten classrooms that are there are current kindergarten classrooms. They are set up, um, they have stoves in them that used to be part of a, a, a much more, I guess a bigger part of the curriculum, but they still do use the stoves. Um, oh, okay. So there are two stoves in those classrooms. Um, the learning support room, it, it's just, um, attached to the bathroom so students that are potty training upstairs in kindergarten use that bathroom students that are potty training down close to the nurse's room use the nurse's room so we're able to spread the children out that have not yet been potty trained so that's been working out well for us um and really the way that it looks the way that it does right now was just less movement so that i didn't have to move teachers okay. around when Thank yeah. you. Okay. I was just curious. Yeah. Mike. Yes, sir. I, I assume, Kelly, um, that if the middle wing becomes accessible, that, that this chart changes. Oh, my goodness. I'd be, yes, yeah. that okay. would be wonderful. So I just want to make that clear that if this chart's set up for the way it is today, not if that middle wing becomes accessible. When I first came to Ben Franklin, the only um, grade level that was together has been, that has been together was my first grade. And every other grade level was spread out all over the school, which did not allow for a lot of teacher collaboration, didn't allow for um, planning to happen. So over the, the past four years, I've made some pretty strategic moves to at least get teachers in the same area so that they can be working together. And thank goodness we did that because with wind time um, being such a major part of our days, now it's a little bit easier for teachers and students to move to classroom to classroom for learning to take place. Where, where's your fifth, second grade? Like, you're saying there's five classrooms in second grade. One, two, three, four. She's right here. Oh, that's my mistake. She's right here. Okay. And then I have a correction to make as well. Right beside the uh, ESL over right? Where the learning support is. Uh, she's side. actually, a, she's in the um, LS room. She's in the intervention room. You know what? My boxes are too big. If the, the boxes needed to go that way, it's high, it's hidden underneath that one. Okay. I'm sorry. And then if, follow up on Tom comment, if that wing, when it becomes accessible, I should say. There we go. When? Would you just put either second grade all up there and then leave kindergarten down on the main hallway? Or do you have any thoughts at this point? And if you don't, that's fine. Yeah, um, I think that we'd have to just kind of take a look at it. I, 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 yeah, I've i never it. thought about it okay. because I have We're steps, starting. so I've never thought about it. Start, start thinking about it. Okay, yeah. Because at some point, it should be done. Oh, right. We don't know where. Okay, uh, Mr. Kerr. Before we go on the cost, because that's more of uh, Eli and Tom's world, uh, we have Dr. Minnick, Ms. Savage, and Mr. Edmondson here. I didn't want to rob you any of you the chance to say anything. If you wanted to add any input, if not, we can move on. But I, we appreciate you're here tonight. But if there's any comments that you want to provide, please interrupt us or just feel free to do so. Okay. Uh, this is where Eli's going to get involved, um, Mr. Kerr. We're the numbers we're looking at to facility upgrades to Eisenhower and East Pike is 6.6, 6, uh, almost $6.7 million. With the, you have a, what they have identified a million dollars in optional facility upgrades at Ben Franklin. 
which then takes us to about $7.8 million. Um, before we go on any further with that, Eli and Tom, I, I don't ever want to mislead the board, and I can't speak in your language in your world, but can you let them know what they're going to get for a low, low price of um, $7.8 million so they understand exactly what they're buying into? Absolutely. Yeah, um, and so you guys know uh, there were no changes from option one to option two in terms of what was required for each one of the schools. Um, and therefore, the cost hasn't changed in terms of facilities upgrades. Um, I'd be happy to talk over that uh, that same breakdown, however, if uh, if you wanted me to. Yep, let's do that when I get to that slide. So just bear with me, and we'll go over okay. one minute. Is that okay? Absolutely. So, Mr. Kerr, what I have in the next slide, really, if you look at the facility upgrades of nearly 7.8, and then the staffing cost of 154, you could be looking at a price of 7. Eight, almost $7.9 million. Again, that 154 is misleading depending on what you want to do. That number um, has some wiggle room. And if you look at the difference in the two, if you take the highest scenarios, you could look at uh, a difference of a half a million dollars, but that number can even grow higher depending on what you do uh, with staffing. Okay, Mr. Kerr? Elijah, I believe this is the slide that you're referring to. Uh, again, I know he tees, and I appreciate your professionalism, but the board does need to understand what this money would get to them because I don't want to be in a position where I have to say, hey, I thought you said we were getting this done or I thought this upgrade would be included. So maybe if you could just go over what that price would get them so they fully understand, even though it didn't change from last time, I'd like to be redundant intentionally, sir. Absolutely. Um, so at East Pike, uh, we had talked about some renovations um, recently as we were refining the scope um with uh with with admin and um and terry present we talked over some of the options and i believe there were uh, some minutes distributed of that meeting just so that uh, everyone can be aware of everything that was discussed um i believe that any of those options the the renovation cost will be slightly higher than we had originally projected um that was a little bit more of a, a smaller scope but um we don't expect it to uh, increase drastically the cost at East Pike, but um, we are we, we just got you know that information hammered out, and we didn't get a chance to update the number on Old Pike um, on East Pike, the old admin renovation. Um, so I would just assume a little bit more there, but again, that would be for both options. So I left it the same here, so that you would have a one to one um, if you're if you're looking at the comparison for both. Um, just know that both numbers will be slightly higher. So at Ike, um, again, the, uh, we would be looking at um, new pre-K classrooms, um, uh, six to seven new classrooms um, in order to pick up the grades, uh, parking around the site, uh, separated playgrounds. Uh, one of the big numbers here is the, the new multi-purpose um, gym, for lack of a better term. Uh, and as well as the lobby and restrooms that would be required to facilitate that additional large space. We have a number in here for demoing the stage, um, not going to be that big of a lift. And then uh, the other big piece is obviously the, uh, the admin entrance edition, which we had worked with, uh, with you guys before and uh, have something of a picture on, but we would, of course, confirm that that is uh, working with everything else that we would be adding here uh, in, a, in another maybe brief schematic phase to, uh, to pick everything up that's happening at Ike. Um, at Ben Franklin, we have included some placeholders here for ADA improvements, again, as, uh, as we heard, to make the one wing uh, available to all classrooms and, and uh, all uses. We've included costs for an elevator here that would be part of those improvements and a uh, increased increased entrance, probably in addition. Uh, I don't think that there's square footage in the current uh, vestibule there to do everything that we need to in terms of uh, the offices and the secure entry point. And that would be similar to what we would be doing at Ike, uh, just so that all three remaining schools are up to the same level of security as well as uh, classroom space. Um, again, and I think I mentioned this before, 
we have thrown a 10% uh, design contingency on this just to um, try to try to cover any changes that may be made along the way, uh, because this is looking at it sort of preliminarily. Uh, soft costs, um, and that brings us up to the, the total. Elijah, if I could ask a question, and I apologize for my ignorance. When we did the East Pike entryway, it was over a million dollars. When I look at your entryway for Ike, it's $420,000. Did you say that's because we're doing all the other projects in that total era? That's why the difference in price or just, I want to make sure the board understands, and so do I, uh, the cost to make sure that this is a realistic number for us. Because I think that's one concern with this market this day and age is, is this number a firm number or is something going to happen down the road where the board comes back and has to put another million or $2 million in? If you could speak to that. Sure, sure. Um, I'm not sure when we gave you the million dollar number, but um, I believe that this uh, 42,000 or uh, 420,000 dollar number was the most recent when we were looking at um, all of uh, everything that was included there. The yeah, million, that's, the million that's dollar my fault, Elijah. I'm sorry. Um, I meant a million dollars at um, East Pike. I thought I said East Pike when we did that entry. Wasn't it one, one, two, one point two million? 1.6, I'm sorry, uh, for, to do that. For East Pike? Yes, sir. Oh. Um, the Elijah. Mm -hmm. Elijah, this is Walter. I, I think what happened was we initially, it was around a million dollars is what the previous architect had said. And then as the design uh, part of it came in, it, it got up to 1.5 or 1.6. And I think what Mike's concerned with is you're showing 420,000 here for the office. Mm -hmm. If we build a similar size with similar uh, equipment in it, um, is it going to be four to 500,000 or is it going to be a million to a million five in the end? I think that's the question that you're really Yeah, to get to. Mr. President did a much better job explaining. I just want to reassure the board that your number is accurate. So if I get questioned about it, I could say we had this conversation. That's all. If that's, if that's fair, Elijah, I'm sorry if it's not a fair question. Sure, sure. Um, we're using uh, square footage values right now for, for the office area um, at 350. Uh, we don't think that is too high um, to include. And then the square footage that we were looking at was only around 1200. Um, now, of course, if we increase that size or um, increase the complexity of the offices, then, then that number will increase. Um, Ter however, Ter I, I, sorry, Terry or Tom, do, do you remember what the square footages were here and what the cost per square foot wound up being? It was, I thought it was ended up being 400 and some dollars a square foot. And I was thinking around close to 3,000. I think it was almost it was exactly 3,000 square feet. Yeah. And it come in at, well, divide 1.6 by 3,000. And... And, and maybe what we could do down the road, I think, Elijah, I think what you would, would respond with possibly is when you look at that size of that entryway addition of 1,200 square feet, if we the board decides not to do that pre-K classroom that was on the board, uh, no pun intended, you can always shuffle that money to make a bigger area if we need it, still stay within budget. Is that is that correct, or am I just ignorant on that part as well? Um, that is correct. I mean, again, th these numbers are not um, exact. Uh, these are our best guesses based on uh, square footages that, that we see for these different types of um, effort, as well as uh, the square footages that we could glean from looking at the plans uh, that we have available and, and um, the, the work that we've done so far for the uh, entrance addition. Yeah, and I was thinking that that it was larger than 1,200 square feet. The, it's much larger than the, Yeah. The, um, and, and it got that way because of, of all the functions we were trying to put up front. So we wanted the, the office, the, the lock, the, the, air, the, the security strap, lock, yeah. the, um, um, the nurses, the nurses with, with, uh, with, with a restroom, and guidance all in that same area yeah. so um I we think, need to double check that 1200 square feet well uh, elijah i think if you just get a plan one of the, if if jared could send you the floor plan for for um east pike uh, um, so that you have some comparison 
those are the functions we're looking for in a, mm -hmm. in a, front, in a front door. Um, not necessarily, you know, that, that particular one had a hallway running through the middle of it that was probably four or 500 feet um, that maybe you don't need um, in, 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 in the upcoming plans, but, for, but it's a good comparison about functionality. Well, I thought even going back, we had a couple sketches for Eisenhower. We did, yep. And did. Uh, I was thinking it was close somewhere around 3,000 square feet also. I don't recall. I know we replaced the windows, right? I mean, that's if I remember right. the location. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but maybe, Elijah, can you send us – I don't yeah. know if this is a fair question. Can you send us what you really mocked up? No. no. And it's more important that, that we okay. send him the plans of, that, that, we, that we struggled over and built and we've had some experience with so that he can write a, a program of, of appropriate square footage. Sure. Right. Okay, if, if he's there and, and- But we also want to point out that the, the uh, in the nurse's office, in the new East Pike office, the exam rooms are too small and we talked yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and that's, that's the advantage that the third one we're gonna do is gonna be right. pretty good. And we thought the conference room maybe, and Dawn, is the conference room okay? Or could it be a little larger? Uh, it just, it would just, it, I would, I would make it wider. That's what I thought. Yeah. So just keep that in mind, uh, Elijah, when you get when you these, those that plans. sketch. Yep. Absolutely. Elijah, is there anything else you want to go over in particular with that slide? Uh, no, no. Nope. Uh, Mr. Kerr, I'll turn it over to you and see if there's any questions before we move on about the cost, because I can't address that or speak to that. All right. Okay. I don't hear any questions. All right. All right. Uh, next one, we have a, a special guest with us, Mr. Travis here this evening. Uh, we want to go over busing impact with us. Um, Ms. Cinda contacted me on a question. I asked Mike to follow up with her, and I said, well, it's better we talk about it in front of the whole group as well because it was a very good question. And before I turn over the floor over to Mike, just a couple different things. Again, Mike worked his magic that we can keep standard start times here at the 4 or 5 building compared with the other schools as well. We would be gaining additional instructional time based on the commonalities of the bus schedules that Mike worked up. And under the current model, we do lose a lot of time for transportation um, because we have busing changes that we are faced to deal with and shuttle buses that takes an impact on our instructional time, Mr. Kerr. So we asked Mike to come up with the model that can we just have dedicated buses to each school? And if so, what would the longest bus ride look like? Are there any associated costs with that? And we know at East Pike, what we would do, the longest bus ride would be 39 minutes, average 25 with 10 buses dedicated right to East Pike. Ben Franklin would be 10. Uh, longest 43, average 37. Ike becomes an issue because we'd have 12 buses, but the longest would be uh, 54 minutes. We would need one additional mini bus, uh, approximately $43,000, but each school would have dedicated routes and there would be no transfers or shuttles. So we gain some instru valuable instructional time. The question I have for Mike is, Mike, what could we do to lower that 54-minute um, ride? And then secondly, when we see the $43,000 in additional mini bus cost, is that before or after state reimbursement? And I'll defer to you, sir. Yeah, the... I'll go. Up is on. Up is on. It's up. It's up. It's up. So, so, yeah, to answer your question, the $43,000, that is the annual cost uh, based on our, our current contract with, with Christ or with STA. Um, that is before reimbursement. So you're looking at maybe 50% back. Um, uh, in, in reimbursement costs from that. Um, when, when I did this model, um, I tried to stick within the, 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 the resources that we have currently. Uh, so, and that's currently, uh, 31 buses for our elementary, not counting our special needs vehicles. I broke those all out because I figured that that would stay, that would be static. That would remain the same depending on no matter where uh, the students would be located. So um, uh, I was able to, uh, uh, again, it shows I was able to uh, uh, break it down so that uh, East Pike would have 10 buses, Ben Franklin would, ha would have 10 buses, and I had it at Eisenhower having 12 buses. Now, um, obviously, East Pike and Ben Franklin, it's only covering half the district because that's all that I have to do. With Eisenhower with the fourth and fifth, it's the entire district. So we needed more buses to do that, and that sort of results in longer some of the some of the longer rides. Um, really, the only way to shorten um, the longest ride for those a couple of students that that are uh, riding that long uh, would be to add additional buses. And in doing so, that would mean more cost, you know, for transportation. You're looking at maybe 
43 to fifty thousand dollars for a full size bus uh, minus the re, you know minus the reimbursement on those so um, again um, I took a look at it um, under our current model that we're currently at, operating at we have about 42 students that are riding the bus more than 40 minutes on a daily basis um, under this model that number is about 26 so we're sort of with within the parameters that we're currently operating at but obviously if the board feels that they want to reduce the the amount of time that the students would be riding on a bus we can do so we just have to add additional vehicles to do it mr Kerr, i'll take any questions or comments michael uh, regarding busing if if we in the future we discuss adding a bus or two to reduce those travel times i'd be interested to know how much the travel times reduced because that would impact our decision if we're only reducing them by two minutes maybe it's not worth the additional cost but if we're reducing it by 10 or 15 then that's a different like are you able to work something like that up not necessary tonight unless you have it tonight but if not could we get something to the board to let them know well yeah i, I mean really uh, i operate best when you give me some parameters do you would do you have a, a, a an amount or a time that you want to keep the students that ride no more than a certain amount of time i can work it so that that uh and that, that would you, happen defer to you mr kerr are you okay with 45 minutes no longer than a 45 minute bus ride is that a, is that a well, could you mike if, if if you add one bus here's what the time's going to be if you add two buses here's what time or 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 you could turn around and do okay 45 minutes is one scenario 30 minutes is the other scenario i'd rather 40, 45 yeah, I minutes 45 minutes though tom get you close to what both east pike and ben franklin are now okay their their longest ride is 39 and 43. um so you know that i think picking a, a Pick particular number, number close to what you already have is maybe makes a certain amount of sense and it's kind of parity across the yeah. across the elementary grades yeah that's possible we could i could try to uh, work with a 40 to 45 minute goal and and let you know how what it's going to take. Yeah, start with 40, and then we'll see where we get. Fair enough. Is that good to you, Mr. Okay. Kerr? Yep. Okay. Mike, anything else from busing or any other questions from no, the uh, committee members? About the only other thing that you you may want to consider is going back to the number, especially at, at, at Eisenhower. Well, it's really not applicable at, at Ben Franklin or East Pike, but revisiting the, the students that live in the borough that are within walking distance of the school, that may affect – your transportation costs as well too because we wouldn't need to stop and get those students so you think that may also then speed up the time then possibly it's it's possible i don't know how much time it would save but it's possible it would save a minute or two here or there you're, you're showing nobody walking at this yeah point. we're um, i work with the current model that, that we're that we have the the current guidelines that we have based on the board's leadership correct you're comfortable with like that yeah, yeah. quadrant walking no, I'm, I'm comfortable with the model we have currently. With okay. Just picking up whoever wants to hop on a bus. Okay. And and that just that, that'll keep the the illustrations to minimal. Yeah. So. Yeah, I am too. For the for the for the benefit of the two two board members, we had a lot of discussion on this three years ago, four years ago, something like that. The question that was raised to us was: you had empty buses driving by students that by our guidelines then would be forced to walk going to the same school and it just didn't make sense to basically force those kids to walk when the bus was driving right by their house okay so we configured this so that um, some of these kids may have to walk to a central collecting point and mike you can correct me if i'm wrong but the bottom line is um you know, we kind of eliminated that incongruity or insanity or however you would like to like to describe it is that a fair yeah well just to clarify that's that's at the secondary level though mr Schroth. and if we're talking about the elementary level that we eliminated walking for elementary level when we reconfigured to the k to three four five model however many years ago that was we, okay, we thank just you. we just yeah. offered transportation to anybody no matter where they live for at the elementary level 
Uh, under pros and cons, we kind of kept it simple. Again, uh, we can go back and correct anything or maybe do a better look when we do the comparison of three models. But some of the pros, it's similar to the current configuration. So there's no need to develop new attendance areas. People know it. People understand it. I don't know if they agree with it, like it or dislike it, but they're at least aware of it now. Um, the four or five building would be somewhat centrally located between both the pre-K buildings. We thought that was um, made some sense. And we could possibly move under the current uh, current ICE schedule, which means uh, four or five start end times a little bit earlier than pre-K. But we now, or as Mike proposed, we have this, the consistent start times. We have limited increasing in staffing costs. You know, the whole argument of what we could do compared to what we must do. We uh, hopefully presented a, a clear case that how that could be cost neutral. Um, the one thing we did like about this that stood out to Jared, myself, and Rob is if you did this, you could open mid-year, meaning once the school's ready to go, we can move kids right in um, because we're just moving from one place back to that building. Whereas if you did a um, uh, a big K-3 to or K-5 to model, I wouldn't suggest you make all that changes in the middle of the year. I'd wait till the following school year. So if that's something that you think is acceptable, you could do it uh, with a mid-year completion date. It's the more cost-effective model based on the numbers that we worked out. And it's also least disruptive to families and, and staff initially. I think long-term, maybe families like the other option. But initially, this one, in my opinion, is the most least disruptive. You'll have to decide based on the input from the community if you think it's the best decision or the least disruptive as well. But initially, it's an easier change because you're taking the kids from two buildings and putting one, whereas you do the other one we talked about, you could be shifting the whole district or a great portion of the district. And what's going to happen is parents could ask us to come back and say, hey, can we keep my child in this building? I'll transport them. And then it, it affects our class sizes. So um, you really have to think about that and think about what you value and what you think makes sense. But we thought those are some the pros. Uh, Mr. Kerr? I'd like to maybe consider one more pro, and that is students would get together earlier in the four or five yep. grade configuration prior to going to the secondary or junior high. Yep, fair could enough. That, could Absolutely. you add that? Because yes, I sir. think that's a big thing. Yep. Aaron, I see, I see you shaking your head. Do you want to speak to that all, Aaron? Just um, based on social emotional learning, if we get the kids together in fourth, fourth and fifth grade, we can do more to combine them as a class and teach them some of those skills as far as um, not that we'll ever eliminate clicks, but acceptance and, and making friends and those kinds of things so that you would have kids going into the junior high less um, divided and more yeah. Together, kind of thing. I agree. I mean, and, I think that's and a, that, especially in this day and age, that could be so valuable in the long run. And it also would help make the junior high a little less scary because you're not only, it's not just meeting new people then and, and a new schedule, it'd just be a new schedule. So that, that's just my two cents. Mike, um, along Terry's lines, what about, I know you gave us the, um, the cost breakdown on the staffing. But what about the impact on your, particularly on your specials uh, now being in one building versus being in two buildings? Yeah, I think we have more staffing. We can utilize them for other needs in other areas. Um, professional development wise, we wouldn't have to retrain everyone based upon where they go. So there's some significant savings there as well. But you wouldn't have to spread the special teachers out. So yeah, that just cuts down on on some of their split time and traffic. And we can definitely add that as well. Because I think what's happening is we're running out of I don't want to say run out of bodies, but it's getting harder and harder to cover everything we need to cover. And these people being in one building would help minimize because we do lose time for travel. We do lose time based on some of those needs. And that would correct some of, some of that, sir. Absolutely. Um, you keep making um, STEM uh, uh, an asterisk. And uh, I'd like to take that asterisk away that if, we're, that if we're setting this district up for the next 25 years, I think we need to get the STEM rooms in these buildings, all through, in, in all the buildings, and that we need to get them staffed. So I'd like to, I'd like, at least in the planning phase here, make sure we have that in place. Yes, sir. I mean, we're big fans of it. We think it makes sense, not because of they get to tinker with toys, but they get to learn from failure. They get to learn from working, collaborating teams. Um, and it's up to what you decide. I think the bad news is you're in a year with uh, several contracts up, buildings need remodeling. This would be an additional cost and with an additional revenue, it's hard to be able to meet all those it's demands. To, but yes, we'd like to. Justify to. spending the money any year, yep. but but we're setting this up for the future, and and uh, and not having that room available and not having it staffed, I think, is a mistake. I would defer to Aaron and Krista. What I see, and I have not been in the classroom as much as I need to be, but Dave Sheeran's done an amazing job 
um, working with kids on their thinking, on their um, abstract thinking, on learning from failure, problem solving, working with teams. I think there's some real benefit from that. And I think our kids at the elementary would also benefit from that as well. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of it, sir. Yeah, I, I yeah. understand that. And, and, and we all are a fan of it. I'd like to, I'd like to move it from, from optional to let's figure out how to get it done. Yes, I, I agree. And, you know, not, not to get too much into weeds, we, you have some bigger decisions also made about um, staffing with regards to ideal. As you know, we have three seconders teachers. We're paying out of Esther's funds. If you were to eliminate or scale back, those people then would have to be paid either way from the local, but you could put the, one of those individuals in the room. So we have options. We just really need to see what um, the board wants to do. And, it, it, you know, um, you have some cost too, Mr. Kerr, for the building upgrades. I, I'd probably project I'm not Eli or Tom, but I'd probably guess anywhere between maybe fifty to sixty thousand dollars with upgrading facilities and equipment, et cetera. So it's something to keep in mind, but it's not insurmountable. And the point's well taken, sir. Uh, Tom, uh, maybe that's something your committee could initiate and then and bring it on up as part of this bigger overall picture of uh, of what what that academic or what those STEM rooms would look like. I think academically, we're, we're going to be pretty well in alignment. And it's just it's just finding the funds to to, to do it. And I I agree, but you know, if, if, all we do, if all we do is build a vacant room today, Julie really can figure out how to get the staff. Room. Yeah, I was, I was going to say we're, we're gonna we're gonna bounce this one over to Julia and let her figure it out. <laughs> He's just getting even with you, Julie. <laughs> Um, under cons, I'm sure there's many more. If you reflect or think about it, let me know. But um, one con was that, yeah, it's going to be a larger building compared to the under model, but it's not insurmountable. 369 compared to 392. Traffic, I think always in that small area is a concern. But you already have buses going there anyway, so you could come back and fight me on that as well. So traffic's a concern because that's a tight area. It is. Town. So you're saying, if I'm hearing this correctly, you already have buses going there. There's not a good bridge node increase. That's how much of an increase. Uh, Mike, how many right now we have how many buses? If Mike was open, how many buses would we go in there on a typical day? Um, it, it actually has to be more, Mike. I'd probably uh, say it's around 20. Right 16. So 16 now, and then under this configuration would be how many? Um, under 12. 12. So it's less buses. It's yes, but it's still a tight air to Madam Vice President's point. So, so, uh, I mean, to, to, uh, to your uh, fence there is, is poorly managed. I mean, poorly handled right now. It's, it's inadequate for the current, for the current system. So, right, if we're going to make it there, it is. Under normal circumstances, too, Mike, under Mike was open, only half the buses are over there at one time. At one point in time, yeah. Where under the newer model, they would all be there at one time. So, so, so could we, as, and this is a question as much for the architects, um, is this a situation where we uh, kind of break the curb like we did down at the junior high and have a... Um, a pull off into in in into our area for maybe half the buses or whatever to alleviate, uh, and I'm just making that number up uh, to to alleviate some of the traffic issues, uh, so that the traffic can still pass when the buses are there. Yeah, it's it's sort of set up that way right now on Pantry in front of the building. There is room for the bus to pull off and have traffic uh, go past it on on School Street. It's not set up for that on Wine. Um, I would say if you're wanting to try to fit 12 buses in that area, then you're almost going to have to have a pull off on one as well, on uh, one street as well, too, on the uh, eastern side of the building. Um, so there's the buses lined up the whole way around it uh, for a uh, half to Smith But we do have an awful lot of curb, curb that we can work with, and it's flat. Yeah. Which is all, all very useful. There's the the south wing is set far enough back off of wine that that uh, making a pull off there or even an angle parking situation there um, would uh, is, is pretty simple. Um, so it, we have the ability to do things there that we can certainly accommodate all buses. Well, that's an additional cost. Mm -hmm. And my next question is the parking. Now, 
that you don't have in order to it's not that many more students but are you talking about how many more parking places are you going to need to find on the part of the plan they would still have to use the roads uh in this proposal i believe they included 30 additional parking spaces um so parking still not going to fit all on campus we still have to use the street as well and at back least. to the yep i'm sorry yes we have we could look at other options too yep we did not look at that and and to clarify um it's more than 12 buses so we said look six come at a time or half come at a time we're saying 12 but depending on what you do it could be up to 14 buses if we want to lower traffic time so i just i'm sorry i didn't include that in there but i want to clarify that so and then last um, on, on the staff budget though um we have the road going back to um, the tower washington washington we have a lot of space back toward washington and then we have the extension of school street that we can park off of so extension of school street school street to goes the west to the west school street goes in dead ends into that driveway that home no, drive we just get that land we're working we're working on that so would that give us what we need it, 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 between it, that and washington it gets it gets awful close to getting to getting 30 to 40 spaces okay on those two streets alone which then frees up the service area to, to be more than it is all we did mr kerr mr Harley, was we told me we want more parking we're deferring to elijah's expertise yeah. well, on how it gets and, more and, and, and you know, when the planning gets done my point is that there's a lot of space on those edges and that's really useful because because we don't have to build uh, we don't have to build traffic lanes we can we can use them <coughs> yeah they take some cooperation with the borough um but i, I well I it takes the cooperation of the people in that ward in other words nobody wants to have their neighborhood turned into a traffic jam or if you're trying to go to work it's stuck in traffic um behind a bus so that's some things we have to work out but i just don't know yet i mean that's a lot of buses coming at one time it is i'm just and it's ready to shift change i'll be honest especially the shift changes wouldn't be all right around our especially if i was still open that gate yeah you do get come brought in Rain, but that was a problem with ben franklin when they were talking about the new school i don't can't imagine how that road could have handled all that traffic it just would have been and i'm just saying it just because i have my husband works there so i hear i hear about it <laughs> 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 i hear i used to hear about my my cars <laughs> and mr kerr i don't know if you want to add another con i don't know if this is a con or a pro you're going to lose what little space you have outside with the additions with the multimedia yeah. area or the multi-purpose center with the addition there's not even much green space but there's not much green space now it's pretty much a concrete jungle out there um but you would lose some of that for the additions and that's just i know that's yeah. an obvious right captain obvious yeah. comment but right. you would lose some of that space as well because that's a little bit more landlocked. yeah and that's all i have is uh, you know what i'll defer to the last slide if you're okay with it mr kerr yeah uh, I would like Elijah and his group to talk about the critical next steps and paths. I think that's important for him to explain. Again, this is if you were to go this route, what he's proposing as far as the timetable. Elijah, can I turn it over to you? And Absolutely. I apologize. I know it's hard to read. It's not the best even when I print it out for you. Um, Elijah, can you help give the board a little bit of understanding about what they're looking at as far as um, next steps and critical path? Certainly. So um, like with the estimate, uh, I've not adjusted anything in the critical path here. Um, more than pushing the the absolute start date out to January 24th, um, when we understand that's the the earliest that the district could finalize, uh, could approve an option to move ahead. Um, at that point, um, we would pull together a proposal based on the option that was selected and provide um, that proposal we're showing here by um, 2.11 or uh, a little beforehand so that you have time to review um, and then we have time to schedule a, um, a kickoff uh, February 11th. Um, then I have broken out here the different design phases. Again, we would have to go back to schematic just um, when we're adding a large gym box to this and looking at all of the site upgrades, we would need to make sure that um, those are all incorporated um, intelligently. And uh, from there, we would move into design development, where we um, develop the, the, um, all of the design that we've worked on to date, um, bring in more level of details. Uh, we would have a uh, much better picture of an estimate at that point as well. Um, we would provide an estimate through schematic design, but uh, and then we would go through construction documentation and um, one thing I mentioned whenever we presented uh, the previous schedule was the concurrent 
um, construction periods. Each of them is um, tight at eight months. Um, the goal was to show the district what it would take to get um, everyone into school by fall of 2023. Now, um, with this, with with pushing the the whole the whole schedule out until to start until um, January 24th, we believe that that pushes you into the school into the fall semester of uh, 2023, even under very ideal conditions. Um, we we don't think it would be uh, uh, ridiculous at all to see that expand out to um, it, the, all of all of the winter with, that you would be starting in the the spring semester. Um, for you, you'd be starting in spring of 2024. Um, but uh, again, we'll we'll take another close look at everything in the schedule whenever we have some more details and we have an option decided on and, and we have those dates ahead of us. But we did want to uh, give you another look at um, what we're seeing uh, with the updated information that the 24th is the earliest that we might have an option decided. Yeah, the only thing I'll add, Elijah, is I, I want to preface again that this schedule is aggressive. Uh, with the supply chain issues, I just and, and the experience we had on the east or the uh, yeah East Pike admin office, it, it this I just want to at this time we don't have to debate it, it but just wanted to yeah I would like to, I would like to try something here, and that in all the scenarios East Pike I'm sorry Eisenhower is going to be utilized. And in all the scenarios, it needs a secure front entrance. Okay, regardless of what's what, what we pick, it'd be possible to authorize Eliza to, to to get to work on the front entrance and get that tied up and done in this in this in this month, so that when we figure out what option we're going to do, um, then you can concentrate on the rest of the remainder. There is no there is no debate about what a what that entrance is going to look like. Um, in function, and and it, and it's needed for all three. It'd be a way to be a little more aggressive, so that so that we have a schematic plan, a design development for that front, and then develop develop the rest of the program. If if he, if Elijah would be willing to do that. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I'd thought of that earlier too, Tom, and I just forgot to mention. Yeah, but so we I'm would have to prove that. In January, we can't approve it tonight. This is a committee no, meeting. No. There's a whole but process. For we, that. Yeah, but we that, could get that, a price we, proposal from Buchard Horn and then uh, discuss it at the January meeting, committee meeting, and then put it on those boards. Which, which, well, which, you which could discuss it at the. Um, which board? And there's two, isn't there? You could discuss it at the academic meeting on the 3rd and then the board meeting on the 10th. Can you, will you be done by the 10th? <laughs> Mike assures me it's a short agenda. Julie's <laughs> getting back. To she re redirected that boss. But, yeah. So you're talking the last. Well, no, it could be the tenth if Tom put it on his agenda at the academic meeting on January third. We could then put it on the board agenda for the tenth. So we would have estimates then. Well, let's talk to Elijah and Jared. Jared, you've done this process before. So are you, so have you, Elijah. Do you want to talk about the timetable? Is this a fair timetable? Can you help us think this through? Because um, last thing I'm going to do is oversell this and tell the board it's okay and then something not happen. So you understand what they're talking about, what they're looking at doing. Do you and Jared want to talk about the feasibility? Because there's going to have to be some sort of bid work and some other things done. But do you want to talk about the possibility of being ready in January? Sure, sure. In terms of pulling together a proposal? Um, yeah. we're, I, I believe we're comfortable in, in pulling t it together by then. Um, we're going to be doing most of the work in house. We would need to find uh, a site consultant, but we have a lot of them that, um, we have one in particular that we would recommend right off the bat. Um, I, I think it's doable. Tom, any, uh, Tom, you're on, you're on mute here. 
No, I would I would ask the uh, board to clarify exactly the scope. When you say the entrance, are you just talking about the new administrative space? Yes. Yeah, Tom. Tom, this is Walter. Okay. I, I think I think where where uh, Tom Harley's going with this thing is, if you guys we're going to do that probably regardless of which scenario we pick. Okay. It's probably going to be the same regardless of the scenario. And so to help alleviate some of the pressure on your critical path there time-wise, if you had another two to three weeks start in designing that portion of the project, um, does that make sense? Does that help us speed this up? Um, and then once the board goes through the process, the rest of the process in January, and we figure out the exact configuration, uh, maybe the office could be, uh, some of your preliminary design work could be done on that already, and then you'd be free essentially to start the rest of the design. Tom, is that kind of what well, you were getting Well, my, my only concern with that is that we want a consistent and uh, appropriate overall architecture. And if we jump out with one piece and don't know what's coming with the other pieces, uh, that may be a concern in terms of making it a... a what do I want to say? A, a functional, but a, a attractive, species. you know, that's all. But yeah, we're willing to jump out and, and start that, but we'd like to go, I think, with a full schematic at one crack. So we know what we're going to do for either changing classroom configurations or adding a library in a different location, whatever comes out of that. And, and I, I understand that, Tom, but if you've got the entrance to uh, design development, where, yeah. where the board where the board could check off on okay this is functionally what we want sure uh, I, I think they need to slingshot into the rest yeah, of this pretty quickly. Yeah. but oh, it, yeah. also, it, also, it also allows the board to focus on um things we can answer at a, at, at a time and then get those off our backs well I thought, uh, go ahead, Tom. Scenario, we're not i don't think mr chelly we're expecting under any scenario that there would I, we had numbers tonight on the students uh, so I don't think it would be somewhere between a neighborhood of what and what. I forget what you said. So students under this scenario. Yeah, what was it? 370 and 390. 360 to 390. I can't hear it. These no, masses. I can't see here. Think what, what Tom's talking about, though, is, a, is an overall um, schematic. Yeah, which, I get that. Which I but, understand. That just the, but that's this, not my point. Okay, my, point? my point is, is that I agree with him. I would agree with Mr. Chelly for the, except that I don't see that the building changing that much. It wouldn't be like we're going, we're adding 300 students all of a sudden under any of these options. So the school would be relatively stable, I think, in terms of traffic flow and needs at the front entrance. But we're very concerned about the security of these entrances. It's been a concern for the past five years since we hired Mr. Um, Giddings. And we've got to get this done. And I don't want to have to, you know, I'd like to see the, the entrance done pretty personally pretty quickly. Well, I think we can accommodate that need. And uh, I just wanted to make the statement that, you know, we don't yet see all of the uh, educational changes that you're willing to make. I mean, you've made them in terms of numbers of kids, numbers of classrooms, but uh, in terms of STEM spaces or uh, making a, what I'll call a 2025 classroom building, uh, we've got to figure out what's changing in the educational world and bring it to you. Yeah, and I, I would just, I would echo Tom's point that um, we do want to look at this. Um, you're, you're, you're spending a lot of money here and um, we want to look at it as a, as a uh, cohesive plan um, throughout the site. I, I would, say with the caveat however that the differences between option one and two are are um, almost none and if we know that we're going with one of those um, we can absolutely get you a proposal here and, and jump out into it and and we would have that cohesive plan um, the only thing that would throw a wrench into that i think is if we were looking at other options at the same time that may um, reduce either the need for the the large gym box that would be put on this or the um, whether we are building out with new STEM classrooms or with new classroom classrooms. I think that 
the option that we had before and, and the sentiment was to build new specialized classrooms and reuse the existing space as all regular standard classrooms. But, um, you know, that's something that we need to we need to pin down because that does affect how it interacts with the with the entryway. So, Mr. Kerr, are you wanting? Um, yeah, your... I'd like to see the proposal because I think that entrance way is going to be the same under all the scenarios. Okay. Well, yes, we'll take a look at that. Uh, we can give you a proposal and uh, and give you some sketches fairly quickly. Uh, I think it's up to Elijah to determine the uh, exact dates that the drawings can get to you, but uh, we'll work on it. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Kerr. Uh, any other questions any or other comments? Any other questions or comments or anything from anybody? Anything? Or if he wants to change or do anything differently, we can we can do so. Miss Leeper had her has her hand up, sir. Go ahead, Tamara. So this isn't specifically for the architects. It's just a general comment. Is this the right time for that? Sure. Go. Um, so I think that we, Mike, you guys did a really good job of telling about um, the savings and additional um, minutes our children will be able to be in the classroom under this, this scenario that you proposed today. Um, but back in 2019, I did a little research and I just scrolled past it. I think another important thing to, um, to indicate for this model is the amount of hours and teaching time we're gonna save. And I think you mentioned that, that slightly, but according to my records and my calculations back in 2019, with all of the traveling teachers, we lost um, about, it was 17.5 hours a week, 70 hours a month, 360 lost teaching hours per year, which was about 78 school days. So if we don't have those five or six professionals traveling between buildings, in addition to having our students in the buildings more, our teachers are actually going to be helping students in teaching instead of driving across town. Um, so I think that those numbers, and somebody can verify them, those were my calculations. Um, I think that is significant to our savings in addition to the, the other numbers that were presented tonight. I agree, those are fair points. Good points, sir. Okay, Tamara, anything else? Was there any, did somebody type something else in or was there another comment or anything? Or? Yes, there, there are some comments about the front entrance with bulletproof glass uh, protection slash measures. Okay. Yeah, which that'll be considered. Yep. Okay. Nothing else. We'll That's close it. this meeting and thank you for another very good presentation. And it was evident that was all there the was a lot of thought and thank time put into it. You looked at all the different uh, angles. So appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank uh, principals, thank you for coming. The board, we're going to stay after. Uh